All right, so I would like to call to order the regular business meeting of the Board of Education for Monday, <laughs> September 23rd to order. If I could ask everybody to please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Thanks for coming. Uh, could I ask for a roll call, please? Here. 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 Okay, everyone is here this evening. Um, our agenda this evening, uh, we will have an education presentation um, on our uh, summer trip to Uganda. Uh, president's report, reports from our Student school board representatives from both schools, superintendent's report. Uh, we'll then open it up for public comment, anybody wishing to speak. Uh, we will approve the consent vote agenda, which was re reviewed in committee uh, earlier this month, and then have updates from the program and personnel committee and facilities and finance committee. Um, any updates, Stephen, on property? No. No, okay. Not. Uh, only a couple comments on CEDAW. Um, anything from Illinois Association of School Boards? Yeah, okay. And that should be it. All right. Um, education presentation. Who would like to take that? Al, you want to introduce Ellen? As you guys are aware, um, Ellen Burnville High School has a program which overlines with the school in Uganda. And we have a group here that was uh, with us on the trip uh, this summer, and Alan's going to start, and we'll go from there. Uh, this is our third trip to Uganda. We went in 2009, 2011, and for the, uh, in two weeks in the summer in 2013 here. We had uh, four teachers and stu two students go this uh, trip, uh, and they're all here tonight, so I'm going to introduce them as they come up to save some time here. But on our trip, uh, the group met and interacted with students in the community that is benefiting from a primary school building funded by Vernon Hills High School in partnership with Cove Alliance. And we actually have the vice president of Cove Alliance here tonight, Darlene Frantonius. Uh, she uh, traveled with me on the first two trips, so I just wanted to introduce her. Um, what we did is we brought with us donated clothing, school supply, and sports equipment. During the two weeks in Uganda, the group visited sponsored children from across the area, as well as fellow school teachers and principals, all the while distributing donated goods. We also had our first ever teacher elementary workshop taught by a retired elementary teacher, Andy Christo. So 24 elementary teachers had their first ever uh, educational workshop in Uganda, and it was at the Cove Alliance. Uh, while the workshop was going on, our Vernon Hills teachers and students taught the classes the whole day so that the Cove teachers could attend the workshop, and that was a fun day. Additionally, Vernon Hills delegation met with uh, high school students at Standard High School uh, for a whole afternoon to answer questions about the U.S., and the last thing that we did is we spent three days completing a painting project uh, with the brand new girls dormitory that was built there. So those are some of the activities that we've had. And I'm just going to go through some pictures. And as we go through the pictures, somebody's going to come up and just briefly um, kind of talk about the pictures and uh, just kind of tell them what, what, what uh, impressed them about the trip that they, uh, with their experience. So Jason, come on up first. And when you come up, just uh, tell what you teach uh, uh, at Vernon Hills. Good evening, my name is Jason Rush. I teach science at Vernon Hills High School, physics. Ah, this view right here, I believe I took this picture. We climbed up to Standard High School, which was up uh, on the hill above our school, and we looked down onto the beautiful Cove campus. This really is a, a, a great picture of our campus. If you can see, we took a walk all the way up that little road to the furthest tree you could see there one day. That was a beautiful walk. We went uh, to see a, a cultural dance. Uh, I believe it was like the Sunday, first Sunday we were there. And it was a three and a half hour presentation. I can't believe how quickly three and a half hours went by. The man who uh, 
uh, introduced everything was sort of a, a comedian. He was also a professor at the local university. And it was just amazing uh, what a great presentation that was. There's another picture of the dancers. Uh, this was, oh yes, this is the 24 elementary school teachers who came from all over, some by bicycle, some by boda boda, which means motorcycle, uh, to participate in the teacher's workshop, the elementary teacher's workshop, and that is on our Cove campus, and there's Ellen. This is the teachers also uh, working. They learned about cooperative learning. And uh, didn't one teacher raise their hand and say, how do I do cooperative learning when I have 118 kids in my class? <laughs> 118 students. <laughs> and I think I'll end right here. This is me uh, and with Megan Dorsey on my left and Katie Franz, our two students who you'll hear from in a little bit. And we taught our uh, Cove students the school song the Vernon Hills Cougars school song. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, they have quasi-English accents. The, the native language is Luganda, but uh, it was uh, colonized by Britain, and they earned their independence in 1962. And if I can give a little rendition of that, it was, uh, roar and shout, bear, bear, in hills, the cougars on the prowl. <laughs> The cutest thing to hear that from 175 kids. It really was beautiful. And, and I'm sure you're going to see it because we took a lot of video of it and it will be uh, s somewhere eventually. You'll hear it. Yes. Okay. Uh, man, come on. Oh, okay. So this is more of the workshop. Uh, I'm Matt Clifford. Uh, I teach uh, social studies at Vernon Hills. Uh, yeah, here we see. Um, we're continuing to sub for the classrooms and so what we did was actually our students played a major role in this they organized the day for us so all the teachers went into this workshop and the, it was our students that we took with us that organized the substitutes put together our schedules and our room assignments so if anything they got a future in administration um, and so here we can see the book uh, yeah this is more uh, of our workshop dates um, here we have our students. Actually, it has a nice little courtyard uh, right there um, at the Cove site. And in the middle is this beautiful mango tree, which is kind of a central location where everybody kind of gathers. And so here we've got a great picture with some of the students uh, under that tree. Uh, we, one of the things we did uh, as part of a humanitarian work was we went and visited families uh, who are sponsored through Cove, uh, who have students at our site. Uh, and so we went to those families and we actually interviewed them. In some cases, we were able to show them pictures and updated videos on the iPad of their students, but then we interviewed them and we wrote those letters uh, from those interviews to their sponsored families. And so we got the chance to really experience that. And it was a great experience for our students as well to kind of see um, how people live in Uganda and uh, what that culture's like. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of chickens. <laughs> uh, the families get, and no one wanted to hold them. They always get passed to me. Um, they, uh, the families give uh, what they can to the Cove site um, as a gesture of gratitude. And we got a lot of like uh, bananas and all sorts of uh, agricultural goods and chickens. Uh, and here we are at the, um, this is at uh, our, um, yeah, vocational school. Uh, this is a girls' vocational high school uh, where they learned a lot of sewing and, and uh, hairdressing. And this is the boys' vocational high school. And as you can see, the soccer balls there were a very popular item that we were able to give there. I think the PE classes were a PE athletics. department. Athletics. Athletics donated those uh, soccer balls. And they were probably the most popular thing that we brought to Uganda, I think. Uh, we walked up there that day. They weren't expecting us because we, uh, the head school masters were gone that day. And I thought we were going to get... Uh, they were just eyeing these soccer balls and like, ooh, they really want these things. And we gave them to them, they were so appreciative. So it's a really popular thing. Uh, this is um, a public school, actually. This is a public uh, school we went and saw. I don't remember the name, because we just visited them very briefly. School. It's in the country, yeah. Uh, and as you can see, the differences in that school, the public schools there, as compared to the schools that we're helping to provide. Uh, St. Jerome schools is far far beyond what they get from their public institution. I mean, this was a little more than a stable uh, where kids were actually being just stuffed into it and learning school. So what they get from uh, our partnership is, is quite amazing. Uh, and again, we're see here, we are visiting families and this is actually interesting because we pull up to their house uh, and they're wearing shirts from two years ago from the Cove Alliance. So it shows that just whatever we can give is, is, is significant because they're wearing those, those shirts for the last couple of years. And another public school here. So you can see the difference just in the building structures between um, what Cove is, is doing there and what they're getting from, from the government. Uh, this is, this is Kapeka. 
right? Yeah, yeah. This is downtown Copeka, so you can kind of get to shops. And actually, these shops have been built up. Uh, as bad as they look, uh, they they've actually been improving their economy, local Copeka, due to a, a paved road going into the town. Uh, the bro the brother of the president has a crop uh, for the World Food Program there, and so they got a nice paved roads. So they're actually getting a lot of shops that are appearing. That's what we see in downtown Copeka. Uh, and here's students gathering. This is, these aren't our students, but our students had to do this every day. They had to take uh, these. These cans are called jerry cans of the well and gather water because it's their only main source of uh, water. Uh, and here's our basketball court. Uh, we're one of the few schools of the basketball court uh, in Uganda. So it's, it's quite popular and, it's, and they, they definitely like it. Um, yeah, this is, their, this is their lunch. Or breakfast, kind of like a brunch. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a porridge made out of cornmeal. Students eat a lot of, uh, basically eat cornmeal and beans almost every day. So that's uh, the majority of their diet. The building to the right is the primary building that we donated. It's the primary one-two building. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Next, uh, Kristen. Yeah. Oh, oh, perfect she timing. Are. She's our dressive girl uh, project. So go ahead, Kristen. All right. I'm Kristen Johnson. I teach family and consumer sciences here. So one of the courses I have is a clothing construction class, and these are some of the dresses that we had made for the past two years, and then we also got a donation. Um, from the Dress a Girl project based out of Lake County, the lady who collects them. So we took a day and we got to distribute dresses, brand new dress to each girl there, and the boys on that day also got t-shirts. Um, in the photos, there are pictures of the students who made them. So the kids got to have that with them to see you know, who was responsible for creating their dress and they really liked that. Um, it's exciting to them, obviously. For us, it's a yard of fabric and not that much time and for them it's their only other outfit that they have until it is completely worn out and there's little left to it so this was my favorite day by far um, there's Dr. Swick <laughs> working with kids it was like a swarm anytime anyone had something cool um, this is actually on our campus so they do have some farming and agriculture there to support themselves I don't know exactly what those crops are but um, this is over at Standard High School. Jason did some science experiments for the kids, which they loved, and that he's actually standing with their physics teacher at their high school, so he could teach the kids and the teacher some new things at the same time. We had, this was our stop at the marketplace. We made um, guacamole one night for our chef, and they, they weren't sure how they felt about it, yeah. but uh, it was exciting for us to go in and see all of that. There's a typical, meal of what we would eat at the Cove site. So we have some uh, Irish potatoes, rice, some stew made out of tree nuts, matoke under the peel. They were big fans of matoke, Jason and Matt. Uh, I think we had fish, cabbage, and potato, or no, I mean pumpkin, I believe, in there. So it was very typical. They did a wonderful job. We definitely did not go hungry. This is one of the libraries. Um, we, Vernon Hills and Ellen, I wasn't um, very involved with this, Book Friends sent a large donation to Uganda and created libraries in tons of different schools. So we got to see all, of, not all of them, but a majority of them when we went to visit and that was one of them. And no matter how small a library is there, to them it's something and these brand new books, you can see it looks beautiful, it's colorful, they have resources they can go to, they have class sets of things, which is something new for a lot of the teachers there. Dr. Swick was a master in volleyball. <laughs> she had to play in a skirt and sandals, unfortunately. Um, and I think we lost. We won, but one, game we won one, game, one game, but we lost the entire <laughs> side or whatever. But it was a lot of fun. Um, this, you know, I'll before keep talking, you go, just uh, what, what, um, what inspired you the most about the trip? Just if you could just kind of share with the board. Well, a couple of things. Every day, I mean, it just got better and better, a new thing came your way and you couldn't believe that it beat out whatever happened yesterday. Um, one of the really important things that I'd like to tell everyone who asks about the trip is that it's awesome to see that whatever we do here at Vernon Hills, whether it's, you know, oh, we're doing the 5K for Cove or we're raising money, it's like, okay, sure, we can donate some dollars, that's all right. But when we go there, the impact that 
our resources that we're giving or having are tremendous. It doesn't compare. When you see our school, it's so nice. The kids are getting a great education. The teachers there are really excited to learn from us so that they can improve for their students. So I think the best part is knowing that whatever we do here really goes back and makes a difference there. Perfect timing. Oh. My name is Tiffany Heinlein. I'm one of the counselors here. And before I start, I just want to say, you know, I, I would consider myself a pretty, I think I've traveled quite a bit around the world, and I've never experienced a trip quite like this. So um, I'm so thankful to be part of it, and I hope to continue a partnership with them um, in way, one way or another. Um, just going onto campus, the children were incredible. Just when they saw you, the, the way their eyes lit, lit up and the smiles, they'd come chasing after the van every time they saw the van pulling up to the Cove site. I mean, it, it was just, I mean, it just broke your heart every time you saw them and just saying goodbye was just heart-wrenching. Um, this was their dorm. Um, they all have mosquito nets. They all have a little um, trunk that they keep their belongings in and then the mattresses. Um, this was them in the library. This is at St. Jerome Center, the library. So all those books, or most of those books, come from the book friends that the, um, the non-for-profit in Waukegan and the help of Vernon Hills put together. So um, this is Ellen with her sponsor child, and was that your sister? My sponsor? sister's child, yeah. So um, they're all a family now. So <laughs> they became friends after they found out that they were both somehow connected to Ellen. Um, this is us at the site where the first built, the building that was donated from the first round. Um, this is the prime, it's P1, P2, and P3. So first grade, second grade, and third grade is taught in this building. Um, and I'm gonna let the girls talk about the safari. The, end, the last two days was the safari, so now the two most important people. Can, can you believe these two kids organized the teacher workshop for the teachers of Vernon Hills? It was unbelievable. But this is uh, Megan Dorsey and Katie France. And uh, why don't you guys just start about what, just uh, briefly what the trip meant to you, so. Okay. Hi, I'm Megan. And this trip was just absolutely amazing. Um, what I tell people who ask me about it is that there were three things that I loved. One of them was being able to <coughs> sponsor my own child and meet her and her mother and tell her that I'm gonna be paying for education because that was a really rewarding moment for me. A second one would be just the absolute poverty that they're in, but at the same time, they're the happiest people I've ever met. So it was a crazy mix of emotions. And the third thing I would say is all these people back here, they're just really awesome and the best people to be with on that kind of trip. So I'm just grateful for all the experiences I had with them too. Um, I'd say that the biggest thing that I took away from the trip was just the kind of marveling at the opportunity to appreciate and observe another culture and just realize how how good we have it here but also at the same time how different but similar we are to people around the world. So talk for a couple of these folks. This is the safari we went on, so of course they kind of say elephants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is us in front of Murchison Falls. And it was a five hour drive from where we were staying, so that was a long day. That was a giraffe, and I was really excited about it because we got so close to it. Megan had the best camera, she got all the great shots yeah. on the safari. Um, and that's a leopard, like, we got that oh close to a leopard. The, like, <laughs> our guy who was in charge, she, we were on the road, and she spotted this leopard from like a mile away and told the driver to like go off the path and into the grass. And, we did, and we got really close. <laughs> that was a hippo, and we were really scared of the hippos because they're actually the most aggressive animal, if you didn't know that, so it was kind of scary. And then there is Mr. Clifford and Ms. Johnson. So that's the van we were in for the safari. The first day was a van thing where we were on ground. And then we took a boat tour of the Nile and went to Murchison Falls. And that was and there's us on the boat, and then there's us painting again. Back the last day to the shop. And so this was the girls' dormitory. That's Mr. Clifford. There's all of us. 
And that's it. <laughs> Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, very nice. Um, Dr. Swift, just one question. Since 2009, I mean, how much has it changed there? Yeah, I mean, when I, I went for the de dedication in 2009, and our, our school wasn't even, the primary one, two wasn't even built. It was just two medical buildings, and so since then, they've added a three, four, five building, two dormitories, a kitchen, and they just now have just the six, seven building to complete. They're just going to be an elementary school, so they have one more building. They have a new class, they bring 35 kids, first graders in every year and move up. And so the sixth grade is ready to go move up and there's no building for them. So they're rushing to get a, a building built for the, left, the last two grades. Great, so, yeah. all right, great job. Ellen, how do they pick those 35 people? They? Uh, they get interviewed, they have certain criteria with families, no more than two kids per family can be sponsored by Cove. Many of them are large families. And uh, they go through an interview process, and uh, they have certain, uh, you know, they can't, they got to make sure that they won't be tardy. Uh, they have to be willing to come back and work at the Cove site, um, that type of thing. So they get interviewed, and uh, they, they, they pick the neediest families, though, when they get married, which is a lot of people. It's a very high poverty area. Great. Okay. Um, President's report, just one thing. Next two, uh, student school board meetings I cannot make. Uh, so I have some conflicts that I can't resolve. So anybody that's interested in attending the lunch, just let me know and we'll make sure. They are the same day as the committee meeting. So, so uh, second, the, uh, mon second Monday of each month, I believe. And next one will be the 15th of October, because it's on a Tuesday, but not yeah. on the state. And then the second Monday in Denise, uh, we're doing together Yeah. Okay. Um, student school board reps, who would like to go first? Go first. Okay. Hello. So I'm gonna start with sports. So the football team is one and three. We won our first game last week, so that was very exciting. Um, Powder Puff is starting. That's um, a girls' flag football thing that we do. And I am not a sporty young lady, but somehow I became a captain of a team. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, the girls' tennis team is currently seven and three. They're doing very well. Along with cross country, cross country is killing it this year. Um, girls, uh, boys cross country is fourth <clears throat> in the 2A division, and the girls' cross country team have won all of their conference meets, so they're three and oh. Um, moving on to fine arts, band, orchestra, and choir students are working on ILMEA. It's where they do all state orchestra and all state band and choir. And it's a good goal to have. And if you see in the fine arts hallway pictures of all the students, um, this, is, this is what they do. They audition and they make it. Um, the musical Bye Bye Birdie is in full swing. Everything is completely memorized. So it's, it's really happening. Um, in academics, uh, the National Merit Scholars were announced. <clears throat> one of them was one of my very good friends. That was very exciting for everybody. And then also, I was told that last time to download the app, the District 128 app, so I did. <laughs> and um, it's really convenient for Power School and the calendar. That was my, those are my two favorite parts of the app. So that's all I have to say. Great, thank you. Um, Libertyville's homecoming is this Saturday, so everyone is very, very exciting. Today was the first day um, of our dress up days throughout the week, so it was pajama day, and then we actually adopted Color Wars from Vernon Hills, um, and so I think that's Thursday, so everyone's really excited for that. Powder Puff, our games are on Thursday, and so um, all the senior girls are very excited about that. Um, we are changing, so homecoming court was announced and they're changing, they're making lots of different traditions. And I think everyone's a little wary about it, but I think the, the new traditions will end up um, benefiting the rebuild. Um, debate team, um, novice training went well um, and they're looking forward to a productive year. Um, football lost last week in a not so close game against Stevenson, but we're looking for redemption 
um, this Friday. <laughs> um, boys soccer lost in the semifinals of the Pepsi Showdown. And I think the school is just really excited. There's a feeling in the air of just really excited for homecoming and the spirit. And, unity. and what, what are some of the new traditions? Um, for homecoming court, um, instead of doing, I was told that we're classing it up. So it's uh, going away from a different, a crazier theme of dancing down the gym in front of everyone as in we're walking and there's 16 instead of um, the homecoming court deciding how they walk in we are going um, they are going to be um, escorted by 16 senior boys chosen for outstanding character or academics um, and I think it's just yeah it's just gonna be a little bit different but people are generally excited Good. great all right thanks very much <laughs> oh, I kept mixing my words up. Oh, okay. Oh, congratulations. Uh, okay, superintendent's report. Okay, uh, we'll start with more good news uh, this evening. First of all, the uh, following LHS and VHHS students were named 2014 National Merit Scholarship semifinalist at LHS Jack Baumrick, Heather Lagan, Timothy Lee, Joseph Nedlin, Maxwell's son, Chaz Wunderlich and Brenda Zanzi. At Vernon Hills, Russell Blickhan, Catherine Kuzwaru, Allison Skiatis, Justin Song, and Eric Zhang. Sorry, I just heard the background noise out there. Uh, nearly 1.5 million students from 22,000 high schools took the 2012 PSAT NMSQ test. 699 students from Illinois representing 16 high schools qualified as semi-finalists. That number represents less than 1% of each state's high school seniors. As a semi-finalist, all of the D128 students will continue in the process to qualify as a national merit finalist. So congratulations to all of them. LHS uh, physics teacher Mark Busing was named one of 11 finalists for the prestigious Illinois State Board of Education those who excel teacher of the year award the winner of the isbe teacher of the year award will be chosen by illinois state superintendent dr chris cook and will be announced during the those who excel banquet saturday evening october 19th at the bloomington normal marriott hotel and conference center in normal the teacher of the year will represent the state of illinois at nasa space camp in huntsville alabama and in the council of chief state school officers national teacher of the year program and uh, as Marina and I have talked and Marina has communicated, Mark represents uh, the best of everything in this district um, and will represent his colleagues, LHS and District 128 well. There will be several of us will be at um, that award <coughs> ceremony, which is uh, normally over 1,000 people uh, there for the banquet. It is a big deal and they do a really good job with it. The 2012-13 VHHS Wind Ensemble under the direction of Randy Sundell has been selected as a Mark of Excellence national winner. The Foundation for Music Education rated the band among the top 25% of auditioning groups from across the country. This is the third consecutive year that the VHHS Wind Ensemble has received this prestigious honor. LHS Fine Arts Department staff members Kevin Holly and Willa Ennis received an award in the annual communications contest sponsored by the Illinois chapter of the National School Public Relations Association, or INSPRA. They received an award of merit in the marketing materials category for the 2012-13 LHS Fine Arts calendar and were honored at a luncheon held September 20th at Maggiano's in Oakbrook and Marina and I had uh, we're very fortunate to be with that group as, as well as Mary. And if you've forgotten, Mary Todrick is serving as the president of INSPRA this year. Mary did a great job uh, with the program uh, last Friday. On Friday, September 13th, the LHS Boys Cross Country Team completed its annual Adopt a Highway project through the village of Libertyville. The team cleaned up Park Avenue between well, Milwaukee and 4th Street. On Saturday, September 14th, the VHHS Boys and Girls Cross Country Teams help pack food at the Feed My Starving Children's Center in Libertyville. In two hours, they packed enough food to provide 57,000 meals for malnourished children from over 70 countries around the world. 
The following LHS and VHHS winter athletic teams qualified for the VHHS, for the IHSA Team Academic Achievement Awards. These teams achieved a cumulative grade point average of 3.0 or higher during last season at LHS, girls basketball, boys basketball, girls bowling, boys bowling, cheerleading, dance, girls gymnastics, boys swimming and diving, and wrestling. At VHHS in the winter, girls basketball, boys basketball, girls bowling, boys bowling, competitive cheerleading, competitive dance, and boys swimming and diving. Congratulations to LHS tennis coach Craig Hunter, who will be inducted into the Lake County High School Sports Hall of Fame on Thursday, October 17th at the Mid Lane Golf Resort in Wadsworth. As always, um, it's just fun to report on all the great things that are going on in the district. Um, next, we want to take a few minutes uh, since um, ultimately what measures our success in the district is uh, are our students growing? and are they achieving at higher levels? And we uh, have uh, yet again some great news to report on that front. And uh, I want to present Dr. Rita Fisher, our Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, who will highlight some of our student achievement results from the 2012-13 school year. Rita? Thank you. Good evening. Um, we are very excited to share with you the results of um, the hard work that our students, our teachers, our families, um, uh, engage in, um, given the resources that we have in this district, um, to provide um, students with an excellent education. I was, it was kind of struck when we saw the Uganda presentation with how fortunate we are to have the resources that we do in this district, to have the excellent teachers that we have, and, and this is why we're able to achieve in the way that we do. Um, so we're starting with the ACT composite score averages. Um, this is the graduating class data from the class of 2013, and we're very happy to announce that the district composite overall uh, went up to 25.5, which is um, a district high. Uh, over the last five years, um, the district average has continued to um, trend up, and um, this is especially significant this year. Um, ACT changed its reporting practices just a bit. So that 25.5 composite score for the first time includes all students who in the class of 2013 took ACT tests, those who took the test with accommodations as well as those who did not. And this is the first time that ACT has reported the scores in that way. So if you wanna compare apples to apples, um, the 2012 uh, score of 25.3 um, actually would have gone up to 26.2 if scores had been reported in the same way as they were previously. Um, from this point on, ACT will continue to report the scores in that way. So we'll stop separating out the data, but just for this one year to compare kind of apples to apples, we wanted to share um, that information. So really excited about district overall averages on the ACT, which is you know, a measure that um, can be used to compare schools to schools and D128 schools, uh, students and schools compare very favorably with those in the state of Illinois, continuing to far exceed state, state averages. Um, the Libertyville High School uh, composite score went up to 26.0 from 25.3 or uh, again, if you um, look at the same calculation as the previous year, uh, Libertyville's composite score would have been 26.7. Um, again, a high for Libertyville High School. Um, Vernon Hills uh, score would have remained the same as the previous year, which represented a big bump for them from previously. So um, the 25.4 score that uh, Vernon Hills received um, or earned uh, based on the same calculations as 2012, um, marked uh, a significant um, ability to retain that jump that Vernon Hills had experienced the previous year. The next segment um, focuses on the advanced placement program in the district. Uh, it is really exciting to know that uh, the district AP program has continued to grow over the last five years. Um, and that while the program has grown, an increasing number of students taking exams, 
the uh, overall success rate of students in the district remains very stable. So more and more students are experiencing the rigor of AP classes, more and more students are earning um, grades that could uh, get, gain for them a significant <coughs> amount of college credit at the university. The first uh, slide shows this uh, program growth for the district. The first set of um, uh, data looks at the number of AP students, and you can see from 2009 until the uh, 2013, May of 2013, the district increased from 702 students experiencing an AP exam to 993 students. And um, of those students, 2,116 uh, exams were taken in 2013, and 1,885 of those exams earned three fours or fives, which generally is considered the benchmark for uh, colleges considering those exams for credit. So um, exciting growth exciting opportunities for students in the district and uh, a really um, significant growth over time that the College Board has recognized uh, for D128 in growing its program while maintaining the very high success rates that it, compare it favorably with other schools and districts as well. Um, so these next graphs show the growth broken down by Libertyville and Vernon Hills High Schools both schools um, showing growth over time in the numbers of students taking exams, the, the number of exams administered, and the number of exams earning appropriate scores for possible college credit. So, you know, to summarize kind of the growth in the district, the trends in the district, there's been a 41% increase in the last five years in students taking AP exams, a 44% increase in exams, and a 42% increase in those exams earning threes, fours, or fives, which is really significant growth for a high achieving district like uh, 128, um, which already had a very successful and strong program um, to begin with. So to show that kind of growth and to offer opportunities for students in the way that the district has is really exciting and commendable. Um, you can see that our pass rate, uh, or um, the rate of students earning threes, fours, and fives um, is a very healthy 89.1, which compares to the global mean of 60.8 and the Illinois average of 66.3. So again, our districts compare very favorably, our district students compare very favorably with students across the country and in the state of Illinois. Final segment uh, of the student achievement presentation tonight looks at the Prairie State Achievement Exam administered in April of 2013 to juniors. Um, on that exam, um, the uh, calculation of students who meet and exceed standards is represented by the graph that you see here. And it's really just a visual to show the purple line being state averages and the lines above it, the kind of turquoise line at the top, the ever-increasing target that the state um, has put in place to meet the requirements of no child left behind. Um, so in 2013, to meet AYP, 92.5% of district students had to meet or achieve standards. Um, very few districts in the state of Illinois met that standard. Um, when, when no child left behind was put into place, and uh, by 2014, 100% of the students in the state were expected to meet standards. It was known that that was an unachievable mark uh, and target, and, and that is what has played out over the state. District students um, are doing very well and in showing increased um, percentages meeting and exceeding and uh, doing so at a far greater rate than those of students in the state. So the next few slides just show us that um, you know, our district students are performing well above state averages and um, in many cases are um, meeting and exceeding standards, but not at that uh, degree of 100% expectation that um, arbitrary um, imp imposed 100% that you know, would be a challenge and is a challenge for any district in the state to meet. The math uh, performance shows the same thing. And again, really what we're just highlighting here is the difference between the purple line state averages and the very healthy growth of both district schools uh, as well as the district average and the lines above that. 
Um, science is the same story for the district. So, you know, our, our concluding remarks about uh, PSAE is that this is the last year that uh, this, this coming year will be the last year that the PSAE will be administered in the form that we know it and that uh, legislators are considering how to uh, adjust state accountability measures as we approach the 2014-15 administration of a different type of exam from PSAE. What we have with student achievement data. I just have one question. I apologize. I didn't sure. ask this when we reviewed in committee. I see our three, four, and five scores are going up, but I think most of the colleges actually are now looking for fours and fives. Yes, they are. Do we see increases even at the four and five level? Yes. Um, the you know, um, College Board continues to report out scores of three, fours, and fives as their measure of reporting uh, acceptable scores and passing scores, but it is very true that colleges and universities are very selective and that each one you know, has different expectations for uh, the scores that they will accept. Um, district students continue to achieve uh, um, you know, the, the section averages that are far above those of um, the, you know, the average in the state as well as the nation and our percentage of fours and fives is increasing as well. And that's something we can report and track um, in next year's report as well to kind of highlight that difference between threes, fours, and fives, and those earning fours and fives, which are more generally acceptable. Okay, thanks. Nice job. Good job. Rita, thank you very much for uh, your work on putting that in a very uh, usable uh, format for all of us uh, with a lot of the data that uh, we've reviewed uh, since it came in last spring. And we get some of that data over the summer and sometimes in the late summer. Uh, moving forward, just a couple of comments in general. One. Um, our uh, achievement data, once again, should place us uh, in easily within the top 2% of all public high schools in the United States since it's continuing to rise uh, and increase. And on the advanced placement, I would think that we are uh, in very good position to win our third uh, annual advanced placement award, which will place us one out of five or 600 school districts in the entire United States. And that award is about increasing opportunities for students to take advanced placement classes while maintaining um, either attaining a high um, average of students uh, successfully doing three, fours, and fives or maintaining a very high average. And if you go back 15 years in this district when Dave Clough first started here, one of his main goals was to double the number of students in advanced placement. And if you look at our trend data over that period of time, we, we've done that and more uh, at this point while um, gradually actually raising the number of students that are taking three fours and fives and it's the richness and the rigor of that curriculum that's important even for some of the students who choose not to take the test um, on their own so uh, that's very exciting for the district and I think we would probably agree that that is also helping our overall achievement go up in the district as we have more students that are exposed to that rigorous national curriculum Secondly, uh, we want to give big thanks and our appreciation to Ellen Swick and Marina Scott, their instructional leadership teams, their teachers, and their support staffs at their building for their continued outstanding work. As we often say, uh, the rubber hits the road in a school district where uh, adults are working with students at the building level. And so the most important work that goes on in this district every single day is the work that goes on um, it, that Ellen and Marina lead in their building in working with students. So uh, we ought to stop and give you a round of applause on behalf of your entire team. So great. <laughs> uh, outstanding. So we're, we're very fortunate to, to have the great people we have in the district, but it also takes leadership um, to move an organization forward as we're all aware. So uh, we've got two of the best principals on the face of the planet and we're very fortunate. Um, in that regard. Um, Bo, I have, uh, we have one more slide if you want to go ahead and put that up right now. Um, Pat, if you would pass that that way. Jim, if you would go that way. Uh, the board has already seen this information at um, committee meeting, but we just wanted to highlight this one more time um, for the community. And uh, we have an innovative performance recognition bonus uh, built into our current contract. And to the credit of our um, D128 union, as well as the board and the administration and the district, we were able to work together um, on a very creative, uh, we think innovative program to recognize 
uh, teachers and employees of the district for outstanding work um, over a period of time in uh, with indicators that are meaningful things that we pay attention to things that we measure our success by and uh, we use a, an average of the previous five years uh, results in the percentage of students tested in advanced placement the percentages of three fours and fives our overall ACT, C, ACT composite for the district um, our PSAE scores and extracurricular participation right now which is focused on athletics as we are establishing some baseline data in the fine arts and student activities. So that will also be a part of that number in the future. As you recall, last year, the first year of this uh, innovative performance recognition bonus, uh, the staff earned four of the five uh, criteria uh, targets that they needed to hit to earn the bonus. The one that we did not earn last year was PSAE. Uh, we're happy to report that this year we have met five out of the five uh, performance criteria, including PSAE, and uh, uh, the board will uh, be able to see uh, this easier than uh, they can on the screen, but just let me hit a couple of highlights. The target for a percentage of AP students tested was 20.8. We were at 29.4. The target uh, for percentage of three, fours, and five scores on the test was 87.7. We earned 89.1. Our ACT composite target was 24.8. Our district composite was 25.5. As Rita mentioned, the district record. Our PSAE target was 80.8. We earned 81.5. And our percentage of participation in athletics, our goal was 90.2%. And um, we hit 90.1%. So as a result of the outstanding work of everyone uh, at the building level and the district administrators who uh, work to support uh, the buildings as well. Uh, we are recommending tonight that uh, the board authorize payment of the performance recognition bonuses, which will come in one single check uh, in the first week of December. Yes, I think is what we talked about uh, prior to the holiday season. So with that, I would request a motion to authorize payment of the performance recognition bonus. So moved. Second. Second. Any, any discussion? Roll call, please. Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Okay, great. Thank you very much, and we will communicate that with the staff tomorrow. I'm sure they will be happy to hear that. Um, finally, for me this evening, the board uh, will note in your packet that we had four, three FOIA requests uh, this month. And Pat, that concludes the superintendent's report. Okay, thanks. You know, looking at the data again, it is amazing um, looking at the AP testing percentage being up almost 50% since we started tracking this in 2006. So that, that probably, among a list of impressive numbers, is one of the most impressive. Okay. Um, consent vote agenda is listed. Uh, as I mentioned, it was reviewed. Oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. My mistake. Always forget that. Anybody from the public would like to speak? Okay. Seeing none. Now, uh, moving on to the consent vote agenda. Uh, we reviewed this earlier in the month in committee, um, so if I could ask for a motion to approve the consent vote agenda, please. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Jackson. Aye. Kelly Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Uh, Program and Personnel Committee, Chairperson Maurer. Okay, the first item we have is Board Policy 7180, Preventing Bullying, Intimidation, and Harassment um, in our student section. There are no updates to the policy, but it does need to be refiled with the state every two years. So we are just reapproving this as a matter of course. We need a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Kelly Kelly? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Mauer? Aye. Radstedt? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Batson? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, and then next we have the first reading of three board policies. First is 2105, Ethics and Gift Ban. Um, and that policy defines and describes prohibited political activity and outlines limitations on receiving gifts by, by board members. And that is new to our district. Um, the second policy, 2120, board member staff development and that clarifies the, the new uh, mandatory board member trainings that we need to take either as elected or every so often every few years uh, policy 7 340 
student records. That policy is amended to align with changes in the school code regarding student records. It more clearly defines what a student record is. Any questions on those? Okay, so we don't need a motion on that. We'll, those will be brought forward for a second reading next time. Um, the next item is the educational tour requests for the month, and there are four listed. Do anyone have questions about those? We're looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Rudy. Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. Maurer? Aye. Bassner? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Bassen? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, and then finally, we have um, a motion for the employment of employees as listed, and these were items that were brought to us after the committee meeting and before tonight's meeting. We need a motion to approve those employment of employees. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Lundstedt? Aye. Aye. Bradsher? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Batson? Aye. Valley Pally? Aye. Rudy? Aye. All right, motion carries. And that concludes the report. All right, thank you. Facilities and Finance Committee Chairperson Batson. Good evening. Uh, we start off with a um, item on our bond, um, general obligation bonds, and Yasmin, I believe you have some additional information for us. Earlier this month at our uh, Facilities and Finance Committee, we had reviewed some opportunities for the school district um, to refund its existing bonds. These are bonds that were initially issued in 1997, refunded in 2004, resulting at that time for a savings of about $1.4 million. Um, with historically low interest uh, rates, we've looked at, once again, the option of refunding the bonds that are currently outstanding. And uh, we have uh, Elizabeth Hennessy from William Blair and Company here who will walk you through the opportunities that are available to the school uh, district resulting in additional savings to our taxpayers. Thank you. Um, you should have received the presentation in your board packet and there it is on the screen, wonderful. Um, I have a market update as a first part uh, of this um, presentation, but I will tell you things changed in a good way last week in the bond market when the Federal Reserve decided not to um, reduce its quantitative easing last Wednesday. In fact, we've had a very nice strong rally. So the results you'll see here are, are good for your refunding, but they're better now after last week's Fed, Fed move. And, um, so this is the 20-year municipal market data interest rates over the last 20 years, and you can see from May till uh, before last week, rates really kind of came up. The green line is a 10-year AAA municipal market data index. Um, the next page looks at the yield curve, and the green line is where we are now, and this shows interest rates from years one all the way out to year 30. And the good news about this picture for you is that your bonds that are uh, available to be refunded are, pay, are going to be paid off in the next three years anyway. So they're at the very short end of the yield curve where the interest rates are the lowest. This next page looks at a historical average. And the, um, on the left side of the page, you see the historic average. This is for a double-A-2 uh, rated I issue oh, for a 20-year maturity. The average currently for the 20-year maturity is 4.96 versus a historical average is 6.34 percent. So um, the graph on the right tells you that 30 percent of the time rates have been lower than this and so then conversely 70 percent of the time rates have been higher. So it gives you a little historical uh, viewpoint on where interest rates are now. So if we, um, oh, and this is just the increase in rates from May until now. I wish um, if I brought you the chart from last week, you'd see the rates come down, because we really had a nice dramatic about uh, 35 basis point decrease in interest rates over the last five, six days. All right, so now let's get into the refunding opportunity. Um, as Yasmin mentioned, the 2004 
before bonds refunded the 1997 referendum bonds for savings. At that time, the district saved about $1.4 million in interest. These 2004 bonds are callable on January 1, 2014. So um, the district has the ability to refund them with new bonds at lower interest rate for savings again, or you can pay off uh, a portion of that with, with cash. So we're going to go through some of those, those options um, in light of some of your, the abatements that you've been doing using your fund balance in the last couple of years. Um, the other thing that we considered is that if you issue less than 10 million of bonds in any calendar year, those bonds become bank qualified, which typically um, mean you get a lower interest rate. Bank qualified refers to the small issuer exception for uh, interest where banks will give you, uh, banks receive a tax deduction from the federal government that they'll pass on to the issuer in the form of lower interest rates. But where your bonds are in the short next three years, um, the difference in the rates is only 0.05% or five basis points, so it's not worth a whole lot in the, the maturities where your bonds are outstanding. So the next options re review, um, option one, um, this is if you refunded all the bonds, we're taking out uh, about 16.4 million is a par amount of that, that issue, and the savings annually um, are averaging about 234000 to the taxpayers. Because your EAV is so big, it doesn't translate to very many dollars on the house. So it's really, on a $300,000 market value home, it's only about $8 a year, okay? Um, pre the present value savings are about $677,000, um, and they're a little higher than that now. The ratio we like to look at is present value uh, as a percent of the bonds refunded. And if that ratio is over 3% in the market, that means that's a good uh, option for you to refund your bonds. Also know that all these savings, the annual, the total, the present value, all in, are less cost of issuance. So they are all inclusive of any cost of issuance or closing costs, okay? So, um, to refund the bonds now, 703,000 is savings over the next three years. If we did it bank qualified, you can see the savings are just a little bit more. In this, in this case, we do uh, less than 10 million in calendar 13 and less than 10 million in calendar 14. So we'd split the issue over the two calendar years to get that five basis point savings. So that results in really just a tiny bit more of savings going up to 704,000 versus 703,000. Given more interest rate risk, that rates could go up, we don't think that five basis points difference is worth waiting. So. Okay, the next section looks at options for paying down bonds with some of your cash. So over the past two years, the district has used some of its fund balance to abate debt service. And what that technically means is that you reduce your debt service tax levy to the taxpayers and instead use some of your own funds to make that payment, thereby giving the taxpayers uh, a reduction. So the options that we looked at was option A, uh, use four million of cash to pay off the bonds and the balance um, bond, uh, a refunding bond issue. Option B, is a, a new option, 8.7 million pay off about half of the bonds. Um, the next option, 12 million uh, to pay off the bonds. And that, given that you abated 4 million last year, that would be as if you abated 4 million in each of the next three years. That's how we came up with a 12 million option. And then option C, uh, 17 million 270 is what it would cost to pay off all the bonds right now and then the interest savings would, would be to the district. So each of these options do in fact, of course, uh, impact the operating funds. So the next slide shows what I believe is your 2014 tentative budget in the operating funds, okay? So the operating funds are made up of the educational fund, operation and maintenance, transportation, IMRF, and working cash. And if we look at the uh, estimated beginning balance of last year, plus revenues minus expenditures. Um, you had a surplus overall of about 3.6 million, and the ending balance of 123 million, which um, 
is 163% of your FY14 estimated 75 million expenditures. So you got some money. It's good. Option A is if we take four million of that balance and, and pay off the bonds. Now, one thing on all these options that is similar is we did a proportional uh, payoff. So the cash is going equally to each of the three maturities as are the refunding bonds, okay? You don't have to do it that way. And Yasmin and I were talking earlier about, you know, if you're using part cash and part bonds, you might want to consider using your cash to pay off that longest maturity in 2017. Then you get the interest savings throughout those three years and could actually shorten up your debt as opposed to doing these proportional issues. But just for this example, um, we're showing it proportional so that the savings are equal to the taxpayer in each of the three years. Okay. So in this case, if we use four million of your own money, your annual savings are going to be at 1,618 approximately. And that does start to impact the home. That's a $57 savings per year or $172 over the, the three years. Uh, the net savings, um, if you take the total savings of 4.8 million, subtract the 4 million that you're using of your own funds, the net savings is 853,000. Okay. And the present value savings is 681. So that's with 4 million of cash. The next uh, page looks at if we use that four million of cash, what does it do to our fund balances? So what you do is you, and we took the money from the education fund because you have strong fund balance there. You would pass a resolution to transfer four million from the education fund to the debt service fund. Okay, so that would reduce your operating fund balances by four million and puts you just about even with where you started last year at 119 million ending fund balance or 158% of annual expenditures. Next page looks at re using about 8.7 million cash and 8.7 million refunding bonds. So this is kind of the half and half option. So in this case, um, the annual savings uh, to the taxpayers 3.2 million or about $115 on that $300,000 market value home. The net savings in this case is up to a million 22,583 net savings. Okay. Present value savings is approximately the same. The next page shows the impact on the operating funds of taking out $8.7 million. So in this case our fund balance goes from 119 million down to 114 million, okay, or 152 percent. The next option C is the 12 million option. Again, as if we're going to take four million for each of the next three years, the savings um, with interest is 4.3 million, or 155 dollars per year on the home for almost uh, for 467 dollars. And the net savings is a million one forty four one fifty. So the savings, the more money you put down, the higher the savings to the taxpayer. Next page looks at the impact of twelve million on the um, budget. So you transfer twelve million from the education fund to the debt service fund, and that would take your fund balances down to one hundred and forty eight percent or one hundred and eleven million. And then option D is a full cash payoff where you take um, 17 million 270 of your fund balance and you just pay off all the bonds. Okay, so the savings to the taxpayers is, um, you know, the 18 million 619, the total debt service over that time. Um, so if we subtract the 17, uh, 720, it's going to be about 900,000 net, net interest savings. Or 1,349 uh, net savings. Sorry. Okay. So those are the options we looked at, and of course, here's the impact on the operating funds. To pay off all the bonds, 17 million 270 would be transferred to the debt service fund, and that takes your 
uh, operating fund balance is down to 105 million or 141 okay. percent. So you can see the, uh, the different impacts. Um, there's so many ways we can slice and dice this. I think the key question for you as board members is what cash, if any, are we willing to let go and use to pay down debt? Otherwise, we have a real nice refunding option here with the current call date being January 1. In terms of timing to make the decision, um, we uh, have really till the end of November because we need for that January 1 call date, and you want to call them at the earliest call date so you can get as much interest savings as you can, we need to give the uh, bondholders a 30-day call notice. Okay, so we really need to make that decision by the uh, end of November at the latest. Um, the next page, just as a recommendation, I talked about this earlier, um, that, uh, that we think you should prepare the resolution, which you have in your board packets tonight, to move ahead on the refunding. The resolution authorizes the total refunding in bonds, okay? So it doesn't contemplate a cash deposit. But, of course, you need to tell me how much cash, if any, you're, you're uh, feeling comfortable to, to put towards paying off these bonds. Um, the earliest we could do the refunding is um, 90 days prior to the call date, or October 1st. And we already discussed that bank qualified doesn't really help you in this case. So the next section looks at the financing schedule. And here we are at the September 23rd meeting. I know you talked about this in your finance committee. So uh, tonight you have before you what's called a parameters bond resolution, which authorizes uh, the board to move forward with the refunding without another board meeting. Of course, you can have more meetings to discuss the cash if you're not ready to decide on that tonight. But the parameters resolution delegates the authority to move forward with the, to, with the refunding to the board president and the assistant superintendent of finance. Okay, so once you pass the parameters resolution, there really is no need to formally look at that resolution again. Questions? I think it, my initial comment is I, I think this is a good news, good news scenario. I mean, we have the opportunity to, to, we have these bonds that are coming due in the next three years. We have an opportunity to pay them off with cash reserves that we have that are healthy balances. We also are sitting in a situation where the interest rates are very low and we could basically refinance the, the remaining three years of these bonds at a much lower rate and save some money. So I think it's, you know, we have to look at it as a balance between how much cash, as you were suggesting, and how much we may want to actually just refinance and pay off over the next three years. Um, but it's, it's a good news, good news. Either way, we're going to save some money. It's just uh, how that money, you know, how that savings comes to us and at what point in time. Are there any other comments, questions? Yeah, I, I believe it's a great idea to refinance, but as I've said for years now, I'd really like to find out what's happening in the state before we start pleading our reserve funds. So I continue to be against uh, anything uh, and everything here if it involves giving money back. So uh, I'd like to see uh, two motions perhaps at some point where we can say, do we want to refinance this or give you the authority to do that? And then the second question being, do we want to uh, give money back and I don't think that's in the best interest of this community at the at the current time in light of the state's condition. So nothing's changed in my uh, my thought process and I love the fine the refinance idea. Well, I think we're I mean we're talking about three years forward. Nothing's gonna change in the state or in the district that's gonna impact us by twenty million dollars over the next three years. So I mean for us and I, I know it's not the way we talked before, it's not the William Blair answer, but refunding these bonds, calling them off, paying them off with current reserves saves the district $1.3 million. I mean, we can't just blow away that kind of money. And if we partially refund something, we save less than that. But we still are gonna pay the bonds back within three years, and we will pay more interest in the meantime. So I mean, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's a simple solution for us. $123 million of reserves, pay off 17 million, it, it brings this issue down to zero. It pre-abates that money for the next three years. We kind of lock our strategy in. 
we still have a reserve that's 140 percent of our, our current budget and I think it'd almost be malpractice to not do that because we can save them over a million dollars for the district over the next three years and you know I, everybody understands there are things happening but nothing's happening that fast it's going to impact the repayment of these bonds whether we do it today or over the next three years I mean there's no pension solution there's nothing that's going to come into play that quickly that would ever impact our budgets to, to offset that decision so I mean I hate to, I hate for the community to think we're going to keep borrowing money that we don't need I want them to know we can save money by refunding the fight paying the bonds, calling the bonds, and paying them off completely. And that's a big number, $1.3 million, it's a big number. So I, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know why we would, we would do otherwise right now. I, I think what we have, you know, sort of in front of us, the option to do is to, the, the resolution that's in front of us is to allow us to uh, take formal action to, to refinance up to the amount of the 17.9 but not lock us into that. And I think we have some time at some subsequent meetings that we can have some further discussion and really come to that balance on what, what we might want to refinance, what we might want to just pay down uh, with some reserves. Um, you know, I understand both sides of the issue here. Um, there is some savings to be had either way. We don't want to miss this opportunity to, to do one or the other. It's just how much uh, more, you know, where does that savings come from and at what point in time? Um, so I think we have some opportunity here. So my understanding is, we, you know, we can do some kind of resolution tonight to put us on record to say we're authorizing the district to do some refinancing up to this amount, but we still have some opportunity to discuss it before that happens and to talk about how much we might want to take out of the reserves to pay off some of this before we refinance. Uh, was that, how, what, there's, there's some upfront work being done as of tomorrow, though. If we, let's say we go along that track and then we decide in two weeks we're not going to do any refunding at all. You will have spent some time and money, I think, on the offering documents and things like that. Yeah, you know, I don't think we're going to move ahead with that until you guys tell us yeah. if, you know, how much cash, if any? How much? Right. Yeah. So just, let's clarify. So by passing the resolution tonight, if we were to have one final conversation on this topic, say at the next committee meeting, right? 15th. At that point, whatever we decide, we could move forward with because we've passed the resolution tonight. And that's correct, Elizabeth, right? Yeah. Otherwise, we got to come back and vote it again, right? Which, I mean, to my way of thinking isn't really a good thing. The longer we delay, the more likely it is that these rates tick back up again. And, right. You know, I, I don't know they're going to move a lot, but. And then what you can well, do in terms of communicating to the public, if we went that direction, then um, we have a discussion on the 15th. If we decided to move that direction, even though we don't need to bring the resolution back to the full board, I think the way that we've worked before is at our October board meeting, we would report back out to the community on record so they would know what we the board had done um, even though we're not required to do that legally and Elizabeth one one other question if the board got further into the discussion and decided they didn't want to do anything passing the resolution tonight it okay, doesn't bind us to actually take further action correct can the board right say you, we don't want to do we've decided we don't want to do anything. changed our mind okay. although we, we don't yeah that, that's a good technical point. we will do right. something <laughs> no and i just, we, we, i know that i want to make sure we're not doing any work though that would not be you know yeah. beneficial yeah. for you guys rating agency work preparation of documents things like that we don't want to get the lawyer no, right what i hear is you're going to stand down and hold until you get a final word on what we're doing correct okay. Okay. correct i mean cool. the, the bond lawyers have put together the resolution as a parameters resolution but if you decide to rescind that resolution and not do anything at a future date that they're not going to send you a okay. okay. Um Elizabeth, the other thing, I guess I would ask the board, would you like uh, Elizabeth or one of her colleagues to be at the committee meeting on Tuesday the 15th in case you have some additional questions based on the presentation? We've in essence, um, you guys have done a great job of the presentation both times, but you may want somebody there to answer some deeper questions, and if not, we can save Elizabeth another night out. Yeah, I mean, I get the sense we have what we need. Okay. Um, it's just a question okay. of, of making the decision with yeah. respect yeah. to how yeah. much cash are we willing to part with. Yeah, I, 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 I think we have what we need. That's what I think. I think all, those models are all there. And Yeah, I think we have what we need from Elizabeth especially. I think the thing that I would like to see in my mind, and we can discuss this at, at the committee meeting, is the overall impact to the taxpayer. And, and we've been in this mode of uh, doing some abating of 
some taxes relative to these bond in, uh, uh, payments. And, and so looking at the next three years and how this impacts each, you know, an average taxpayer, the $300,000 home taxpayer or whatever target we want to use to, to look at it over the, the period of time because it changes things on both the operating and on the bond piece depending on whether we refinance or whether we pay it off. So I think that, that trajectory is, is an important one for me. Right, and at the October uh, committee meeting, it is my intention to bring to you uh, my projections too. Okay. Also, we are working on a revised capital projects list to so have an idea of what is mm -hmm. out there as far as uh, future needs of the district. So you have to be in a better position to make a decision. Yeah. So that's the Will kind you have of revenue projections then? Because really what this boils down to is, I mean, if we're going to, it depends on how much money we're going to take going forward. Yes. I mean, okay, so you'll have that. I'm working on it. Okay. Okay. And again, just for the community, we had uh, a fairly extensive part of the conversation at the committee meetings was um, we didn't want to jeopardize the large capital projects that we've, uh, you know, authorized to kind of move forward with uh, at this point. And it looks like, you know, that's all factored into the equation here um, moving forward that we would want to continue to move forward with those larger uh, capital projects and not have this impact us. Uh, and it appears that it would not. Um, Which again, though, we should roll that in and forecast our fund balances given those projects as well, just so we can look at the total pay. Where are we going to end up in right. three, four years from now? Okay. The other question, Jim, or someone mentioned abatement, and um, Yaz or Elizabeth were correct here. This would, in essence, if we did this at some level, this would, in essence, we would no longer be abating. Correct. Okay, so this would be a built, built to your point, kind of a built in abatement. Right. Um, right. Well, yeah, yeah, let's clarify that. So, right. I mean, the reason we abated in the last two years is these, these bonds were not callable and we could not take this action. Right? right. What's changed is now we can call the bonds and we can refinance. Yeah. But it was a convenient way to, to do the abatement. It was the right fund to take the money out of. It was yeah. easy to scalp it out of that fund. You know, yeah, basically, we were giving back to the taxpayers a, a portion of the payment for these bonds. And we were paying those bonds, bonds out of another fund. Yeah. So we're just yeah. doing that ahead of time. But, but it's still, you know, we're running a sort of a negative arbitrage. Now we've got $17 million in the bank earning 0.1%, and we're paying 4 or 2 or 3 or whatever the numbers might be. I mean, we're spending money. That we're spending might keep whatever we keep us in. Yeah. What I should also mention here is that there is one additional bond payment that is not part of this refinancing, which is due on January 1 of 2014. So the current. So you're going to pay that off anyway. You're going to pay that off anyway. Yes. Right. I just wanted you yeah. to know that as well. How much of the numbers change if you don't do this across all the different bonds? You just let's say pay off the, the longest ones because that would be the best thing because that do. actually gets you down even to the lowest of the low right. interest rates too yeah right? that would be the best thing to do this way this taxpayer um, you know see sort of a decline yeah. at the end of the year as opposed to throughout yeah all right i'm good with taking this to the october finance committee and hashing out the details again i think it's a either way we go we're going to save some money it's just how much and how much are we willing to, you know, invest out of our savings, basically, that we're also using for some capital projects. So it's a balance, and we have to come up with a strike that balance. So what's the motion? Okay. Elizabeth, does Jim have to read the, do, read does it? whoever doing the motion actually have to read what we had written? Yes. 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 Okay. Just a paragraph. Right. So. I make a motion that we approve the resolution providing for the issue of not to exceed $17,900,000 general obligation refunding school bonds of community high school district number 128 Lake County Illinois for the purpose of refunding certain outstanding bonds of said school district and providing for the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay the principal and interest on said bonds Second. Okay. discussion again just to clarify passing this resolution tonight allows us to take action between now and the next board meeting which we will finalize somewhere between then without the need to take another vote and we would come back at the following board meeting and basically explain to the public the action we chose to do. Right. Uh, okay. Bring them. 
up to date as to what was discussed at the committee. Right. So essentially what we're agreeing to is we're agreeing to we can take action up to and including refinancing the whole thing. Doing nothing or refinancing zero the whole thing. To or the public could come to the October. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> I, they can I, hear I, all about I was it. going yes. to suggest that that will be a rather good substantive discussion, I think, at that committee yeah. meeting. So for those of you who have always wanted to come and see the board actually in action as opposed to just approving stuff, um, I would highly encourage you to yeah. attend that session. Yeah, October 15th, 6 p.m. in the Libertyville High School uh, Library. Okay. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All right. Roll call, please. An hour. Aye. Radzer? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Batson? Aye. Deli Pally? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Lundstedt? Aye. All right, motion carries. Good job. Okay, next one I'm going to get, uh, let uh, Yasmin uh, speak to as well, but this is the uh, uh, voting for the uh, 2013 aggregate tax levy. At our September committee meeting, once again, we discussed the aggregate tax levy a discussion we have um, in September every year, basically to determine whether or not the school district will need to have a um, truth in taxation uh, notice and hearing um, if, in fact, our extension or our levy request is going to be 5% over the previous year's extension. As we discussed, once again, this year we do not need to seek uh, an increase beyond 5% with a CPI factor of 1.5%, a uh, declining uh, property base and limited new growth. Um, we had talked about about an increase of about 4% in our aggregate tax levy. Basically that is a levy, does not necessarily mean that is the amount of increase we will get. Chances are it will be less than half of the 4%. However, I did want to let you know that beyond our discussions, we received information from CEDAW where they have asked for an increase in their levy from 140,000 the previous year to 228,000 for the fiscal year 14 tax levy. And uh, that amount is non-capped as per state legislation, so that is the amount that will be requested on their behalf by us. It is basically <coughs> funds that we collect and then uh, sort of write a check to them for the full amount. Um, so with that said, um, if it's okay with you, if you'd approve the aggregate levy this evening, um, it'll just set up the base for future action. So we're basically asking for 4.13% 4. 4. increase, fully expecting we will not oh, absolutely reach not. that 4 point, no. not, maybe not even half of not that half. Uh, once the tax cap goes into place. So right. it's, it's just to a, a hedge our bets basically to capture possibly new construction that will come online that would, uh, we wouldn't be able to capture if we didn't uh, uh, levy enough, that those types correct. of things. And what it also does is it gives um, us the ability to, if needed, move the funds between the various funds that are there. So there's just a little bit of cushion still keeping within the limits of the uh, PTEL legislation. So we're thinking it ultimately will be 1.7? Plus new growth. Yeah, plus new growth. Plus the, you know, the CEDAW levy, yeah, which uh, yeah. obviously is uh, you know, their request. So somewhere 2% or, or less. Uh, regardless of what we ask for here. Right. Yeah. Okay. We have a uh, motion, please. So moved. Second. Do we need to read the motion directly? Uh, there isn't a motion on this as such. Uh, there's just uh, the motion will be at the. You can just basically read to the aggregate level. Yeah, the, uh, the adoption of the aggregate tax levy for 2000 uh, FY14 as uh, recommended by administration. So we had a uh, motion and a second uh, discussion. The seed all jump? What? How much was that against that all entail? Is part of that the groups that are jumping out of seed yes. all and are driving? No. No. Basically, what it is is. Um, the IMRF payment for CEDAW employees. <coughs> what had happened last year is they had used some of the surplus they had to um, negate the higher increase in CEDAW that in IMRF that they were seeking. This year, obviously, the surplus is gone, so they need the money again. It would be like us abating one year and not the right. next year. It's kind of an up and down. They get, they get, they get, they get a double. What's a, what's a total CEDAW increase for the year then? Like, they got double back and they got that and the other. 
Yeah, uh, right now, oh, districts has, right, promotion. but districts who are still deciding to withdraw from CEDAW still have to pay the IMRF levy because that is an obligation. So uh, it's not that, it's the fact that they had used some internal funds to kind of lower the levy request last year. So they've artificially, they've artif not artificially, <coughs> but they've kept it artificially low. Right. And yes. now we're coming back up to? Maybe you know more about it than I do at your, so what, again, what is the total seed all increase we're thinking next year? Well, they have requested that from last year's 140,000 mm -hmm. that it be increased to 228,000. Wow. Wow. They made a big jump several years ago and then it flat, right? Yes. There have been ups and there have been downs. The 140 was really low compared to yeah. the previous two or three. And that's our portion of the seed. That is correct. So every member pay. school district is paying a proportion based on uh, the equalized assessment. And ours is going to be higher because our EAB is higher. Correct. And right. in future yes. years, it will be higher because some of the high wealthier school districts may not be part of CEDAW. Right. Okay. So we had a motion for the 4.13% and a second. Uh, any other comments or discussions? We have a roll call. Brad, sir? Aye. Arthur? Aye. Batson? Aye. Valley Pally? Aye. Rudy? Aye. Monstead? Aye. Mauer? Aye. Okay, the next item is a is an exciting item that uh, we uh, heard quite a bit about at our committee meeting earlier in the month, and that is a, uh, um, how do you say this, photovoltaic grant? Basically, we're looking at um, um, uh, generating electricity on, on the rooftops of our two buildings, uh, using this both for possibly saving some money as well as academic purposes to uh, enhance our science curriculum. Uh, it's um, solar energy, basically, is what's happening. Do we have any additional information from... Basically, what we are asking tonight is for you to approve this application in concept. Um, it is phase two of the application process, and this requires board approval because there is a commitment if this grant was to be awarded and accepted that there would be a 40% match from the school district. Um, so this is a group that's, that's preparing a, a, a grant, a second part of a grant uh, that we got a very small portion of uh, earlier. Yes. We received about 9,000 previously uh, with the solar panels both at Vernon Hills and Libertyville High School. And throughout this small project too, we've had our roofing contract very involved in it. There were a number of recommendations that were made as to how the solar panels should be put on the roof, what kind of material should be used to support it. So those kind of discussions have happened in the past two weeks after our meeting. Yes, we have asked for some yes. modifications. You've asked for modifications too. In how the panels were put up. Uh, what is holding the panels on the roof? Our architect uh, has made recommendations to the gentleman who was in the audience that night. What would be acceptable to our roof? And he has contacted our roofing, the gentleman Sorry. ready for roofing, to work with him. So they are in. Yes. Just it's still the ballast without drilling a bunch of holes. No, that's no. Well, there's going to have to be holes drilled. Okay. But that's before it's the ballast that our consultant is not too excited about that system. On the cinder block, he has made other two different recommendations of what would be acceptable, and that's where they are working together. As soon as they agree to that, then our roofing contractor will be on the spot to therefore do the the penetration. But if we will do the penetrate. We are going to drill a bunch of holes in the roof to do this. That was kind of contrary to what we talked about. There's going to have to be some penetration. Well, will it be multiples, hundreds? No, that's okay. what we're working on. I think that's the, that's the bigger issue. Yeah. But then what, how does that impact moving it? I mean, that was all the whole thing. It's all going to be movable. In, in discussion of that, he also, our architect, roofing consultant, said that he wants some input where this is going to be because I used your scenario about moving furniture, and he said that, yes, there'd be an impact and a cost similar to when you move these units, when you have to do roofing, and it says time is money. So the longer it takes to move these panels, the more the cost of the project would be. But it's work 
and doable that they have to work together. Did he give any indication? Is it, is it 10 percent, 50 percent? So we'll take a look at those numbers when they come. And again, tonight the grant is just authorizing us to move forward with the grant process to keep us in the game in the 60-40 split, 60% grant money, 40% um, district cost. And again, if we pull the plug on this, we haven't lost anything because we haven't received money on this grant. This just authorizes us to stay in the game if we move down this path. When we get the information and we look at it, if it's good or it's not good, then we can make a decision from that. As right. of Sunday morning, the third recommendation was made, so they are they are working working together. Jess, have they done uh, this arch with an architect contractor work with solar panels before? Yes. Uh, he is very familiar. You ought to see some of these emails back. Yeah, that's oh, great. Whoa. It just, yeah, so he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yes, do we have an he's estimate of what out of the forty yeah. percent is <laughs> dollar wise? I believe it was seven hundred in a presentation that's the maximum so what uh, my understanding was they're applying for a fairly large grant the, the large the, right. the maximum the that they will allow us to to apply for through this grant process we may get something less yeah. than that and so our commitment would be 40 percent of whatever that grant comes in um, right the payback period was like six or seven years and what's the life of the roof? The life of the roof is yeah, 20 years. Okay. So for the vast majority of the life of the roof, you're basically picking up money, saving money. Right. And the money that Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like right now, I know we just have Yeah, yeah. This is not purely just to save some money. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't get the grant in second portion, the original <laughs> four solar panels will be educational. Right. That's the value of those four. But will the value, will the experience for the students change because of the multiplication? Well, it, no. yeah, yeah, like the economy of scale will provide yeah. a lot more opportunities in the volume of electricity that's producing. Oh, it's running. I mean, if you look at Mark and Mike Bush and our physics teachers, you know, they would, yeah, that would be a great laboratory. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They'll see it in action versus this, basically showing them a model. Right. Right. It's, it's really the major difference. Yeah. At the end yeah, of the day, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. I want to say, if you run backwards, <laughs> yeah. It's doubtful, but I'm Yeah. You may get there. You'll never go backwards. backwards. But it might slow, slow down. down so we're right. just trying to slow it down. Start in the morning. Better run back. We're still going to spin like a meat slicer. <laughs> the next phase, we put in charging stations for everybody to charge up their high water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We're green. It's it's in the country in green schools, right? So this, uh, the the motion that we're we're looking for is to support the forty percent of the funding for this project, uh, and assuming we get some or all of this grant, I would expect to. You know, come back and have a, uh, some kind of presentation for uh, demonstrating what we're in for at that point in time, or how big the grant is, and maybe some of the updates from the from the discussions with this the roofers and whatnot. Right. right. We have to have this. Uh, we have to have your approval to move forward with the next step in the grant process. Right. Now I'm buying. We need a motion and a second. Uh, I move that we pursue the provotaic <coughs> grant process. For the second. 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 Any other comments or discussion? We have a roll call, please. Arthur. Aye. Absent. Aye. Valley Aye. Birdie. Aye. Monster. Aye. Mauer. Aye. Rapser. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda, the discussion of Brainerd Building and Property. We did have some discussion at our committee meeting. I'll turn it over to Dr. Lee. And Well, basically, I think as, as the board and community are aware, um, the um, Save Brainerd or Brainerd, Brainerd Preservation Group is working with the village to attempt to run uh, a referendum um, in the March election to support um, uh, work on the building so they can maintain the building and, and use it, it looks like, as an, an art center uh, for the community. As we um, have uh, continued to do, we are uh, uh, supportive of uh, the effort. 
um, of the group and any work that the village is doing uh, with the group. To that extent, we have uh, extended the lease counselor at least three times, um, I think, to give them more time uh, based on the economy and, and some of the work that they're um, trying to do with that project. In the meantime, a couple of years ago, through Property Committee, uh, we talked about the ne necessity for our district to begin to create a vision for that uh, building and property if the building were to come back to us with the concept that, again, while we are supportive of their efforts, if the building comes back to us, we know, and Jess would remind us uh, if we forgot, that there is a run up to doing anything on that property, uh, including the demolition and the asbestos containment, let alone actually doing something to develop the property in a use that uh, uh, the board would see um, and Libertyville would see as effective as the overall uh, part of the overall strategy for um, LHS moving forward. So uh, we've been working down that path for a couple of years and at this point, um, Brian Kelly and Jess, uh, I asked to meet with uh, our architect. Um, as the board knows, uh, we'd like to use that uh, for green space. Uh, reconfigure the parking there so it's not such an odd shape, run it um, straight down in a longer line, similar number of parking spaces. Um, the parking lot at the one end is very close to the playing field. That's a great concern for um, Brian Kelly as the athletic director and I'm sure the coaches and, and parents at that building. Uh, but it would allow us to um, have additional green space for uh, use. We've asked them also to look at, basi basically at your prompting, to look at um, uh, possible costs as, as we're looking at that possibility for part or all of that to be a field turf um, so it would be usable year-round uh, and it would have multiple uses uh, moving forward. So uh, Jess has met uh, Ann Bryant with the architect, um, Mike uh, Henderson uh, from STR and Mike will be um, working on some drawings if you will um, uh, based on the feedback that Bryant uh, gave him, who's obviously speaking for Marina as the building uh, principal in terms of that. So uh, we wanted the community to know that we're continuing to do our due diligence in moving forward with a plan um, that we can put into place reasonably soon if the referendum that does not fail and if the building were to come back to us um, sometime in the next um, year as per the current um, lease agreement. So and we would put in a commemorative gazebo. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and we've Bringer. talked at, really, Just at Deb Larson's suggestion right. as a way, yes. and I think Pat initially brought this up, and I, I think Deb uh, uh, kind of took off with of that idea, but we could use uh, some of the bricks to make a small uh, gazebo with a plaque on it to commemorate the old building. So, um, Jess, I'll just remind you that we need to build that into a corner of the property. It was already discussed right. Thursday, and it right. will go on the triangle part of our property, uh, close to 176, and it'll be a picnic area, and it'll look very nice. It's very good. And, and so just to remind uh, the public again, uh, who uh, were not at our committee meeting, in that area would also uh, re include permanent restroom facilities for men uh, and women, and storage. Uh, building a permanent storage building, so that would all be incorporated in um, to that project there. So, any other questions? Can Does, we deal with the timing of uh, Mike having plans? We said that the superintendent wanted it yesterday, so we hope that he got the message that would be here for our October half and half. But I, okay. I so it's it's imminent. We we may have we may have to. Send that message one more time, but I think Jess did a good job of sending the message that I gave him <laughs> to get Mike. So, I mean, it's within the next month or two. Anyway. Yes, sir. Right. right. So, uh, uh, and this doesn't require a vote, obviously. Yeah, it's just yeah. enough. Thank you. I, th I think it's important that the, the, the public understands what our plans are for that if, in fact, the referendum doesn't go through. I think that's, a, that's an important uh, uh, information to get out. And, Which, by the way, would be another topic for the public to come out and share. Yeah. Be happy to have six o'clock on uh, October fifteenth, Libertyville High School. Um, we discussed briefly about CDAL, what we had discussed in facilities and finance related to the CDAL um, funding sources and the, the makeup of CDAL as a consortium of, of um, school districts and the impact that may come from uh, one or more of those districts uh, pulling out of that, that group. Uh, I don't know that there's a whole lot of information, additional information. Yes, do you have any other further? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but 
Yeah. So it's it's something we'll keep our eye on um, as we move forward, but it'll t certainly have some impact on us as a member of that uh, of the CEDAW uh, group. I would, as long as I have the floor, just make one other uh, request or comment. Uh, it's sort of a facilities-related thing, but uh, tonight we have uh, a little different device in front of us. We normally have uh, some laptops. Tonight we have a, a Chromebook, and I'm not too sure how familiar people are with these devices, but I think it might be a, a helpful thing for the board to get a, a little briefing on what these are, and not just for what we use them for, but what we what they're used for in the in the district with the students and uh, how these differ from the traditional laptop and what the benefits that we're gaining from this. We're actually planning that as an educational presentation uh, in the future because we have done a large rollout of uh, Chromebooks or uh, Chromebook based uh, books. These happen to be Samsung's, Samsung's I believe yeah. uh, by model and uh, as you know uh, we are approaching a mul we are using a multiple solutions approach uh, where it's uh, just not Chromebooks, it's going to be a multiple um, approach to technology rather than doing a, what's called a one-on-one -on -one rollout where every student gets an iPad. Um, we want to make sure our teachers are trained uh, to use the technology and they can integrate that instruction so those tax dollars are used well uh, to move forward and it's going to be multiple solutions again. So Jim, that's a great point and we'll, we'll work with Mick and and some of our instructional team who are using uh, different modes of technology, including the Chromebooks. Yeah. I know I had a conversation with Nick at one of the opening day of that thing. So his plan was really great, I think, compared yeah. to some of the other well, This is a very powerful yet cost-effective yeah. device to use, and I, I think it's it's something that might be of interest to, to a lot of yeah. people. It'll be a great presentation. Okay. So that concludes the uh, facilities and finance. Okay, property committee, no update, correct? Um, one. One quick comment uh, for Chairperson Arthur. Um, pretty much along the same lines as the conversation that Jess and I had with uh, on the Brainerd property, but um, we have met with uh, Mike Henderson, Yaz and I have met with uh, Mike Henderson from STR. One of the things that we are working on that um, uh, Stephen was working on with us with property committee is to do a master, look at options for master, uh, a master uh, property plan for both of the buildings moving forward. It's a little easier at Vernon Hills because that was kind of laid out. Uh, if we do the second gym at Vernon Hills, we already built the locker room on the front of the building. We know where that space is, uh, but that was standing. We do want to look at Vernon Hills again, uh, and we also want to look at Libertyville with the um, options that we might have for a master um, a property plan. So we've asked um, Mike Henderson uh, to do that as well with the same um, encouragement to uh, be expeditious. Sense of urgency. Yes. 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 Can, can I tell us, and I think we need to do an enrollment projection too. If we're going to talk about the gigantic enrollment, we need to know how many students we're going to have. Well, we, we have that data bill, and, and we're flat going 10 years out. Um, we're we're going to go up, we're going to go down a little bit. We will share that. Oh, I thought we actually took that, but we can share that. We, we can share that at the next committee meeting with you. Uh, but there are no big dips in the road. As, as you look at our average out uh, 10 years, it's, it's pretty flat. Uh, moving forward, but that again is good information to have, and we'll update that every year with the elementary districts. Okay. All set. Okay. All right. Uh, Special Education District of Lake County. Okay, we talked a little bit about um, the funding issues. There were really th two other things at, at this month's meeting. One, they they unveiled a new uh, picture series uh, in the administration building that really shows the kids in action. That that was really impressive. Um, so if you if you've ever been there, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. Or if you've never been there, it's a wonderful thing to see. And um, they also um, indicated they had finalized their teacher contract. Uh, and I think settled at about 3% annual raises, plus or minus a little bit. So uh, that was good news as well. I know they've been working on that for a while. All right. Um, Illinois Association of School Boards. Just a couple things. Uh, the uh, Lakes Division dinner meeting uh, for the fall is October 23rd. I will be attending on our behalf. But it, as uh, with any of the meetings, anyone uh, you know, can certainly attend that. Um, I would say let Denise know if you're interested. Who's going right now? Let's go. 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 Let's go.
Looks like a good agenda. Yes, yeah, it'll be <laughs> interesting, especially in light of no. some of the things that have gone on here. Um, so that's, uh, that's coming up October 23rd, 5 to 9.30 p.m. And then just a reminder on the uh, AAA conference, if anyone's uh, interested, if you haven't uh, filled out your information. Good. All right, anything else? All right, if not, um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thanks, everybody.